Hello and welcome. My name is James from the DSO Imager channel and today we're going to go over uh, my mosaic of the Bat Nebula. Now a few weeks ago I posted a video uh, where I featured uh, this this frame right over here and uh, definitely check that video uh, if you want to see how I process this. I went into a little bit more detail than what I'm going to do on this video uh, but I had always planned to do a two panel mosaic. Now this was taken with my Celestron Edge, 8 inch Edge and a um, ZWO ASI 294 Mono. So you know I couldn't squeeze the whole thing obviously in here but the, the resolution and detail is pretty good. And so what I did is I focused on this panel first because I wasn't sure how the weather was going to cooperate and whether or not I'd be able to knock them out. but I was able to get more time after posting the video on this frame and um, I was able to complete the mosaic. So we got 30 hours on each panel, uh, 20 hours of HA and um, 10 hours of O3. And these are the uh, stacked unprocessed panels. So with uh, mosaics, right, there's a lot of prep work that has to be done. You have to get both uh, panels ready, right? So we have the HA on the left for uh, panel 2, and panel 1 is over here. And you can see how I've got uh, things organized here, right? So here's the O3 panel, and we had to do a PSF. For deconvolution, star mass for deconvolution, and a range mass for deconvolution. And I ran dynamic background extraction and then ran deconvolution. So here's an example of O3 with uh, dynamic background extraction and deconvolution. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can see why I wanted to do this with uh, the 8 inch edge, even though the field of view isn't quite. Uh, enough. It's because you can get a lot of a lot of nice detail in there. And so yeah, I mean it ended up being uh, a decent amount of work there. But you know, I mean we can get an idea already that it's uh, got a lot of potential. So anyway, after doing uh, all of this, what I would do is um, combine the um, combine them and um, stretch them, and then uh, go through the mosaic process. Uh, so yeah, this is this is what the two frames look like. combined. And so for the mosaic I use the uh, gradient merge mosaic tool. Now I have a couple of videos that go through that process so I'm not going to go through it on this one. Uh, but what you end up with is two panels like this and then you're able to run that mosaic and uh, you end up with that. Actually, you could see the seam on this one. I ran through it a few times. Let's see. Maybe I don't have it in here. Well, yeah, it's right here. So, in order to clear out the seam, I had to raise one of the values a little bit higher than I normally do. Uh, this one here. Uh, so usually I slide the black point to 0.10, uh, but this time I bumped it up to um, to 0.20, and um, I ended up with this brighter image, but the seam was gone at that point. And so this is what I ran with here. And so here you can see I took the stars out. Uh, I was just kind of experimenting at this point. 
we got a couple other versions, right? So here's some stars. I uh, decided to run DBE. So to get rid of this uh, green haze that's in the background, this O3, uh, leftover O3 signal, I ran dynamic background extraction. And that did a great job of killing all of that. All of that. I tried initially using curves to dial it back, and it was very difficult. And I was losing some of this more fainter stuff down here and up here. So running dynamic background extraction, which is not normally something you would do on a stretched image, uh, in this case it it worked pretty well at getting rid of that, uh, getting rid of that green. And there's where we take the stars off. Now this is already looking really good and I'm just loving the detail that I'm getting uh, getting in these areas here. But I want to get more separation from the background also uh, and I talked about this in my other video the 294 mm it tends to give you some baiting uh, banding artifacts if the uh, signal is too low and it's a problem you run into with narrowband images where you have por portions that have lots of signal and other portions that don't have lots of signal. And so I think maybe to eliminate this, what I probably needed to do was either increase my exposure or increase my gain. Uh, I was experimenting with shorter exposures. Normally I do 10 minute subs. Uh, for this image I did 5 minute subs. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're seeing the effect. I tried to counteract this by bumping the gain a little bit to uh, a gain of 130, but uh, obviously it, it wasn't enough. So I need to create some separation between this fainter detail and this background. Um, in my previous video, someone suggested using the, um, the uh, banding, Canon, Canon banding reduction. Uh, and this is a script uh, it's a pretty old script. This is back when um, when older uh, Canon cameras were used a lot and they produced a banding artifact. Uh, and I've used it with some success in the past. Uh, but on this image, it didn't really do a great job with the banding. So I played around a lot with it and it just, it, it tended to make it worse. So unfortunately, the script didn't, didn't do the trick for me but what you'll see here is that I just used some curves work and I got the background a little bit darker than I prefer but it was necessary to, to hide the banding alright so I got to this point and I made a copy because so I like to um, it's, it's like saving this step without having to backtrack all the way and uh, some more work, more curves work. Now you're seeing some use of masks. Yeah, I'm focused on this area in here. Really trying to pull out that fainter stuff without getting this area too bright. Uh, now you can see I'm doing some work just on these brighter O3 spots. And what's going on here? Yep, some work on all of this. So, I mean, these areas are so bright, and you get a lot of this white. Uh, and so this white is where it's so bright, the, the color is, is being pushed out. So I try to pull back on curves a little bit to allow some of that color back in there without making the image look too flat. And so I left a little bit of the white in there, but... can see how it's coming out yeah see that that shift there that's so I stopped at this point this shift right here was attempting to use that uh, banding script and you can see what it did it just kind of it, it basically moved the banding from one area to another <laughs> so I stopped it at this point All right, uh, let's see. Um, 
these are stars that I did the work on. Could be, right? So HOO, I forgot to m mention that if uh, if anyone missed that, but uh, this is a what you call an HOO image. So it's the hydrogen in red, and then the oxygen is in green and blue. And so naturally, you get a lot of greenish color, right? Because it's a, an overwhelming color. And so the stars need a lot of work. And uh, usually what I do with stars is I hit them with morphological transformation and then I pull back on curves a little bit more, increase saturation, invert, and then use the SCNR tool to remove all green. And then I remove all green on, on this part here and that usually is what gets you nice colors. You got kind of like yellowish reds and you got blues and maybe here I reduced it a little bit more and you can see that these are different versions where I put the stars back in and I'm experimenting with star sizes mostly star size and color So, I mean, this is really the, the final image right here. This is how it ended up. But the story for this image doesn't end here because uh, while I thought this came out pretty good, um, I actually thought the one I worked on with just this panel here was a little bit better than, than I got here on the overall result. I think the HA signals ended up being a little bit too strong compared to the O3, but still, it looks great. But what I really liked uh, was the starless version. And so, usually, while I can appreciate starless images, I usually prefer the stars in the images. But in this case, uh, the stars really do conceal some of the fainter details and the more intricate uh, filaments that are in here. And I am really happy with how this uh, starless version ended up. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, how this one came out and I think overall I'm happy right I'll, I'll call it a, a successful mission <laughs> now I know the uh, the content I've been putting out has slowed down a, a bit over these past couple of weeks and this is mostly due to weather uh, naturally for for us astrophotographers uh, but I'm not too um, too down on it because this area has been in a pretty bad drought and we're, we're getting a lot of badly needed rain so you know what I'll take it <laughs> but anyway uh, if you uh, enjoyed this or you want to see more of how I uh, process my images please subscribe give the video a like and uh, stay tuned clear skies <laughs>